Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video. And in this video, finally, we are going to be building up an image of MongoDB. Now, I won't be waiting you much further. You have understood all the concepts and hidden things which are behind the scenes. And now I think you are absolutely ready for that. Now, during this installation, I will tell you to pause at a given moment so that you can actually uh, copy and paste some commands. I'll give them in the description section as well. These are basically the links from where Alpine has to download MongoDB. Just like you don't know from where to download this utils or maybe gem or maybe even Postgres or Post, uh, Postman. So that's why we have to provide the link as well. So how do we provide a link into a Linux is a little bit different, not tricky at all, a little bit different. So we're gonna just go ahead and work on that. Okay, so what I want to do is I really don't want to do all these installation and bin utils. So I'm going to just remove that. These were just for the explanation purpose. We're going to still keep this uh, from Alpine because we want to use the Alpine image. Now, the two important thing which you have to remember are these commands. So these are not installation of the software. And I'm going to just remove this one as well so that you can see that properly. So what these commands are doing uh, right now, our Alpine Linux doesn't know from where to get MongoDB. Some of the other repositories, maybe Ubuntu, might be knowing it by default. So how does these operating system actually knows where to look and where not to look? Now these are mostly holded in the repository. Just like when you don't know anything, you look for the Google, here, these Linux go into their repository and look for the links or the most common links where it can look for the software. Now, this Alpine Linux holds uh, into the main and the community edition. These are the repositories which we want to update with these links so that it knows where the MongoDB is. So again, go ahead, pause the video or check out the description. I'll share these links uh, just right as it is. They are not very hard to find. Even a quick stack overflow or a Linux forum can actually give you that. Okay, now that our OS knows from where to get that, it's not like it's gonna be just getting that and it's gonna be all okay. We have to run a command. So for running a command, we're gonna say run and then apk, just like your apt-get is a command, similarly, uh, you have a command in the Fedora section of the Linux, we have yum. Similarly, in the Alpine, we have apk. So we have to update it so that it knows that links or the repositories are being updated. There we go. No big deal for that. Now, we are going to have a MongoDB. For that, we're going to simply say run. And we have seen this already, apk add, and then we want to have a Mongo. So there we go. Now, MongoDB that we are going to be installing is going to be of very specific version. In the production grade, you don't just pick up every latest version of the software that is being released up. Usually, you're going to see that there is some version or some revision number being specified after a software. So we're going to be choosing up a very specific one, 3.4.4, and then we are going to choose a revision 0 there. 0. Okay. Do I need to specify this? Probably not, you can get away from anything after the equal sign, but I don't recommend that. I want to just use the practices which are used in the production grade right from the start. So that's what we are doing up here as well. Now, once this is being done, we are gonna move into step 2.5. The MongoDB is installed in your system, but as I said, MongoDB is not just a piece of software, it's a service. It makes your computer into a server. What is the server? It just provides you a service. So we have to configure it that how we want to or how we expect these services to serve us. So for that, we have to first run a command which is volume. So in the volume, we're going to load this into a slash data slash db. So this is a specific folder which we have to create in order to run the MongoDB. In case you have watched my MongoDB series, that's exactly what we were doing while installing it. Make sure that you keep use of the exact command. Now you can also install a plugin in the VS Code that says Docker and it will help you in uh, predicting these commands, kind of IntelliJ stuff, so that's also good. But again, there is no such compulsion for that. You can just simply go ahead and type volume space and in the square brackets, we are giving this parameter. Now we also are gonna make a working directory. So what is going to be my working directory data? So whenever anybody logs in or want to work into this machine, remember when we were getting these SHL, that person will land up in the slash directory as that's my working directory. Now, one more very important thing. 
since this is a service, it needs to be associated with a specific port. That's why we are going to expose this to a very specific port. And the most common port that is being used with the MongoDB is 27017. Again, you can modify it. I don't recommend you to do it right now. Don't change it right now. You might find some of the troubles later on when you're comfortable with Mongo as well as Docker. Feel free to just change anything, whatever you like. Okay, so that is all done. And also in the last set, we're gonna set a default command. So we're gonna simply say command and that is gonna be Mongo, Mongo D. So this MongoD means I want to start a daemon in the Mongo, which is a service. So just start the server and ready for that. So we have done a lot of things going on up here. And the good news about this, first let me show you what is going on. This is one line, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So nine different lines. Yes, you guessed it right. It's gonna just create a separate container eight times. Nine because this is not gonna be executed inside a separate container because there's just an image being downloaded. Rest all these commands are gonna create a separate container for that. So how we can verify that? A pretty good thing. So we're gonna save that. Now sometimes, let me show you uh, also uh, kind of a disclaimer. Not all the time every line actually creates a separate container. There are a lot of uh, little bit tricks in here there which we have to discuss, but right now we're gonna just assume, hey, almost every time it creates a separate container to execute that command. So what we're gonna do is now we are up here. Let's do a quick ls. Yes, Docker file is up here and we're gonna run a command Docker or I can actually look for, there we go, Docker build and dot. And we're gonna hit enter. And now all the things are going on and so many things are going on. And notice here it says four slash nine. And we're gonna look for that in a second. Hopefully we are seeing that everything should be good and it's gonna install a whole lot of things. Uh, we're gonna discuss about them. Now here is a quick side word. Now it doesn't mean that you want to install just one software. That means that one software is only going to be installed there are sometimes dependencies associated with that software, so it also needs to bring them up, and Linux does that automatically for us. So there we go, we have got a successful build, and this is what we are having. We're gonna run this in a second, but first we want to discuss a little bit on that so that we can see what's going on. So at the very top, we saw that we are having an Alpine, which is running a command echo. We have already given that command. Then again, a new container is being created, uh, which is again running the container with the command of echo. So there we go, so far so good. And then we are running an APK update, which is also running in a separate container. Again, all these files bringing to the image to that, it's all, it's all going on up there. And after that, it tried to install uh, our package, which is apk add mongo. And while running it, it realized that, hey, I need a couple of more libraries, of course, uh, lib standard C++ and uh, boost IOS stream, a couple of bunch of other dependencies of that. So it's installing all of that. And then it came up here, it installed the MongoDB, created a working directory, again, a new uh, temporary container is gonna be created for that. And after that, a lot of things goes on and the default command is being set up here. Now here, the default command is actually optional, always, always kind of optional that, hey, uh, it's almost like saying that you don't need to run this command, but in case you just know that this is the default command, you may want to use it at some point. And finally, it built a successful image of that. So there we go. So this is actually your image, which is going on to be the final image. Now, moving further. Uh, we need to do a little bit of the testing again. So what we're gonna do is, we're, I have copied that uh, ID, in case you haven't not, uh, you can just go ahead and copy that here, it's just right here. So copy that, and then we're gonna simply say docker run and this. You can also use docker start as well, or docker run, however you want to go with that. And notice here, it says at the very end, for connections uh, at port, something like this. So how can I verify that something is running on this port or something like that? We have a couple of options. I can press Command N or Control N to just start up another terminal. I'll keep that running. And I can simply go ahead and say Docker PS. And there we go. A Docker uh, instance is running. Almost it's good to say instance, not exactly, but rather a Docker container is actually running. So uh, I'm gonna copy this ID because the previous ID is actually the image watch is running. This is actually the container that you want. So copy this ID again, 
And now uh, we can go inside it. So how do we go inside that? It's pretty simple. We can go docker exec. We can raise up a flag of dash it and then run this. And you might be very keen to write and get a bash shell out of it. But there is going to be a little bit issue for getting a bash shell. Let's hit enter and see that issue. And there we go. It says, I don't know what the bash is. Bash is actually a special program uh, which you need to install inside the system. The most common shell which is available by default in most of the Linux is the shell itself. So you can just say sh and hit enter and there we go. And notice here, you have got the shell but the directory on which you have landed is slash data. So that's my working directory. So can I run Mongo directly up here? I guess yes. We can simply say Mongo and hit enter and there we go. At the bottom, we can see at tilde, not tilde, uh, an angular bracket. Tilde is a different one, <laughs> my bad. So there we go, we are seeing up here. And I can run that command again. Remember, I told you to remember just one command in the MongoDB, that is show DBS, and there we go, hit enter. These databases are coming up from the container or the image that you have created. So that's really amazing, that's fantastic, you have created that. I'm going to hit control D to just get out of it. And there we go. And by the way, in case you have noticed at the back side, also, it has given up all the things that what this is going on, which shell is being active. We're going to talk a lot more about these internal clients and how these are happening. But right now it's all okay. Now let's quickly do a quick summary of what we have done here. I guess that's not necessary much, but I'm still going to do it. So from the Alpine, we have created a very empty image or we have installed the OS. Then we have updated uh, these repositories to where to look. Uh, or to update these repositories so that it can find whatever the version of MongoDB we are having. Make sure you don't forget to update these repository first. Then we have mentioned a specific version of Mongo, which is a good idea. And we have also installed the volume or kind of a plugged in the volume slash data slash DB. When I say volume, I mean I just want to be into a directory because for the Linux, any hardware, external hardware you plug in, whether an external hard disk or pen drive, these are just volumes. So these volumes are being mounted Mounted is actually a correct word. And then we have specifically mentioned that my working directory in case of MongoDB is going to be slash data. In case you are creating any other image, maybe some in-memory databases or SQLite, then this working directory is not needed much. Exposing this port, we're going to talk a lot more about that later on. And then we have got CMD and all of this, the default commands. Whew. Pretty much a lot of things we have learned in this just one video. But I hope you have enjoyed it. It was pretty exciting to create our own image, a customized version of what I really want inside the system within just a second. So that's it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and you have already got that subscribe button just turned on. And we're going to catch up in the next video.